Okay, this is the first practice test from Ms. Zatto, Professor Lauren Zatto. Um, word on the street, she's really good. This is a college algebra class. This is the first practice test from her, her assignments. All right. Um, first test is mostly algebra, so solve the equation. So there's a way to do this by hand, but we're going to use technology. I recommend this calculator, the Casio 115 ES Plus. Again, it's the same calculator. Sometimes it's a white version. You have different colors. In order to do this one, there's not really much work you need to do if you're using this calculator. We're going to hit Mode 5.3. Mode 5.3 will generate the quadratic formula app on this calculator. And all we have to do is type in the, the values. So the first value is going to be A equals 1. So I type in a 1. I hit equals, it slides over. B equals negative 10. And C equals 16. It's important that it's in this format, standard form. Hit equals, hit equals, and it solves it for you. So x sub 1 equals 8, and x sub 2 equals 2. So your solution set would be 8 comma 2. Not a coordinate, a solution set. Solve this equation. Again, it's in the form ax plus b. It's ax plus ax squared plus bx plus c. It's in that format, so A is going to equal 1, B is going to equal negative 12, and C is going to equal 27. They ask you to do it by factoring or complete the square. I'm going to let the calculator take care of it, so I'm going to hit mode 5, 3. Notice mode 5 gives you this. 3, it says it's x squared. So mode 5, 3, I'm going to type in the 1 equals, the negative 12 equals, and the 27. Hit equals, and it'll kick out my answers. Hit equals again, x sub 1 is 9 x sub 2 is 3. So the solution set for this would be 9 comma 3. Solve this equation. Now, this one's a little bit more involved. I don't want to use the calculator. I want to use my wits. So the opposite of squaring is square root. So when I add the square root to both sides, I have to add a plus minus. So that would be plus minus the square root of negative 19. Right away, I can go in here. They all have plus minus. See that? Now, the opposite of z plus 5 equals that. I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. So that's going to give me an answer of negative 5 plus or minus the square root of negative 19. But the square root of a negative number is an i. So notice when you take the square root of a negative 19, your answer is going to have a plus or minus i root 19. It must be choice c. Another solve the equation, number four. Immediately when I square root both sides, I'm going to have plus or minus the square root of negative 10. That's going to be I root 10. Notice it's not this one, it's not this one. It has to be choice A. Uh, that would leave me with Z plus 6 equals plus or minus I root 10. And the opposite of plus 6 is minus 6. So I'm just showing you the extra work to go the extra mile. So it has to be choice A. Solve by completing the square. Again, I'm not going to solve it by completing the square. I'm just going to notice that it's already in standard form. There's a hidden 1 for the A, a negative 2, and a negative 4. So I'm going to mode 5-3 it, mode 5-3. It's a really nice app on a standard scientific calculator. Uh, it's a solving app. So you type in 1 equals, negative 2 equals, negative 4 equals, equals. So 1 plus the square root of 5 is an answer, and 1 minus the square root of 5 is an answer. So my answer is going to be... 1 plus or minus the square root of 5. <clears throat> For number 6, again, they want me to solve it. So I'm going to use the calculator to solve it. I'm going to go to mode 5, 3. Mode 5, 3 generates my A equals B equals C equals. So A equals 1, B equals negative 18, and C equals negative 4. So that's 9 plus the square root of 85, and then the second answer would be 9 minus the square root of 85. So you write that as 9 plus or minus the square root of 85. Now this one, it's not in standard form. I have to get this negative 11 over to the other side. So I'm going to add 11 to both sides. Standard form would be y squared minus 8y plus 11 equals 0. Now I can mode 5, 3 this. Once it's in that format, notice the leading coefficient is 1. The next coefficient is negative 8, and then 11. Now, if you typed in negative 11, it would give, generate the incorrect answer, but it's 11 because I had to add that over. 4 plus the square root of 5, 4 minus the square root of 5. So your answer for number 7 is going to be 4 plus or minus the square root of 5. Quadratic formula to solve it. 
This one's also out of order. I have to add over the 14. So I'm going to add 14 to both sides. Now that would generate y squared minus 8y plus 14 equals 0. I'm going to use the calculator to generate the answers from that. So I'm going to type in 1 equals, negative 8 equals, and 14 equals. Hit equals again. 4 plus root 2. 4 minus root 2. So my answer is going to be 4 plus or minus the square root of 2. Find the coordinates of the other endpoint. I call this one endpoint midpoint. So they give me an endpoint, they give me a midpoint, but they don't give me the other endpoint. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up, I have an endpoint, I don't know what it is. That's called x, y. That's what we're looking for. I have another endpoint, second endpoint, um, that's negative 18, positive 18. And they give me a midpoint, and my midpoint is negative 23, 20. So here goes the move. Notice the midpoint is halfway. So to get all the way over to the other side, what we're going to do is we have to double this midpoint. And this is going to go pretty quickly. So I have my endpoint. I have my midpoint. I have x, y is what I'm looking for. So I'm going to write this down. x minus 18 equals 2 times negative 23. That would be negative 46. Now all I have to do is solve this simple equation to give me my x value of the ordered pair. The other equation is going to be y plus 18 equals, I do 2 times 20, 40. So I have two basic equations to solve. I'm going to add 18 to both sides. So I don't know what that is off the top of my head. I'm going to use my technology. I'm going to turn it on. Now I'm in some weird mode. I'm in some weird mode when I have it on. So I'm going to go to mode 1 to do my normal computational mode. So negative 46 plus 18, um, yep, yeah, plus 18, that equals negative 28. So my x value is going to be negative 28. I'm going to minus 18 from both sides for the bottom part. So 40 minus 18 is 22. So my y value is 22. They want the answer as an ordered pair or coordinate. So the ordered pair would be parentheses, negative 28, comma, 22, close parentheses. Another endpoint, midpoint. So I have an endpoint. I don't know what it is. And that's going to be x, y. They give me this endpoint as negative 5, negative 1. So my second endpoint is negative 5, negative 1. And they give me the midpoint. And my midpoint is 0, 6. Now try to remember, the midpoint's only halfway. So to go all the way, you have to double it to get to the other endpoint over here. The equation's going to fall out of the pencil pretty quickly, so it's going to be x minus 5 equals 2 times 0 is just 0. Y minus 1. Y minus 1 equals 2 times 6 is going to generate a 12. We're going to solve both of these tiny equations. I'm going to solve this one for x, so I add 5. I add 5. So my x value would be 5. I add 1. I add 1, and my y value would be 13. So my coordinate, my ordered pair, is going to be 5, 13. Number 11. So I want to find the distance. The distance formula is pretty complicated. It is a big radical. And then when I put the, the minus signs in there, it looks like that dude from Tokyo Drift with the narrow sunglasses. And now we deal with the x's. So I'm going to put the x here and this x here. So some people do x sub 2 and x sub 1, x sub 1 and x sub 2. I'm going to put it in an order. It doesn't matter as long as you keep the order the same. So negative 16 minus 9, negative 9, and then negative 24, negative 19. And I'm going to let the calculator generate the answer. The calculator will simplify and leave it in radical form or put it in decimal if you want to. So we have to be in mode 1 for this. I'm going to hit the square root button. It has a nice square root button on the top screen. Parentheses. There's a parentheses button here. Negative um, 16. We have to be careful with this one. So I'm going to want to hit the negative button. Negative 16. Then the minus button. Then the negative button. 9, close parentheses, squared. Plus, that's part of the formula. Parentheses. Negative 24. I almost misread my own handwriting. Minus negative 19. 
close parentheses, squared, and it'll generate the answer pretty quickly for us. Root 74. Now, if you wanted the decimal to that, all you would do is hit the SD button, standard to decimal, and it would give you the decimal equivalent or the exact radical, either or. Another distance formula, find the distance for number 12. So again, I'm gonna set up the big equation. If you set up this template, it's kind of difficult to get it wrong. Now I'm just gonna throw in the x values, negative 13 and negative six, and then the y value of 20 and 23. And I'm gonna let the technology do the rest of the work. We can type it in directly. So I'm gonna hit the square root button, parentheses, negative 13 minus negative six. See, I have the negative ne minus negative right there, close parentheses squared, plus as part of the formula, 20 minus 23, close parentheses squared, square root 58. They want me to write the equation. I don't need to do any math. It's going to be opposite, opposite. So the equation of this is going to be x minus 3, the quantity squared, plus, notice the plus sign comes from the, from the formula, plus y minus 3 squared equals whatever the radius is squared. So you take this 2 and you square it. So 2 times 2 is 4. So that's your equation of the circle with the center at 3, 3. Circle center at 2, 6 is going to be parentheses x minus 2 squared. I got the 2 from there. Plus y minus 6 squared equals 4 times 4 would give me 16. And there's your answer. Now, this one a lot of people don't like. Um, they want the center and radius. They want the center and radius from this general form equation. Now, I haven't seen this anywhere on YouTube or anything. I, I came up with this myself. What I do is to find the center really quickly. You just divide that term by negative 2. Uh, so 12 divided by negative 2 would give me negative 6. And then you divide this term by negative 2, and that would give me negative 1. So I instantly know my center is located at negative 6, negative 1. Now I want to find my radius. The radius is a little bit more involved, and you have to kick this 28 over to that side. So that would be negative 28. So the radius is going to be the square root of negative 28. And then we take this number and we square it. So 6 times 6 is plus 36. 1 times 1 is plus 1. And then I enter that whole thing into the calculator. And that will give me my radius. So the square root of negative 28 plus 36 plus 1. Whoops, I put plus 2. Sorry. Plus 1. And that gives me a radius of 3. So my radius equals 3. They wanted the center and the radius. The center is negative 6, negative 1. The radius is 3. So over here, I'm going to write it in. That the center is negative 6, negative 1. And my radius is 3. Number 16, a very similar question. So I'm immediately going to seek and destroy the center. So all I do is divide that by negative 2. 6 divided by negative 2 is negative 3. 6 divided by negative 2 is negative 3. Now to find my radius, I kick that over. So that's going to be r equals a big square root of a negative 14, because I have to subtract it over. And then negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. y value squared, negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. Some people do this in their head. I'm going to do it in the calculator. Square root, negative 14, plus 9, plus 9, simplifies it. My radius is going to equal 2. The radius of the circle is 2. Is this a function? A square root is a function, yes. And if you were to graph it, it would look like this. It would look like this. So they asked me the domain and the range of this function. To find out what this graph is, you have to take whatever's underneath and make it greater than or equal to zero. So we're going to take the square root of 8x plus 3 
and we're going to take what's ever underneath the square root, which is going to give us 8x plus 3, and make it greater than or equal to 0. Because whatever's underneath the radical has to be 0 or higher. Well, yeah, I can take the square root of 0. Let me see. I can take the square root of 12. But can I take the square root of a negative number? No. Unless you're in mode 2, complex mode, it won't allow you to take square roots of negative numbers. So graphing, we're only allowed to graph real numbers, not square roots of negative numbers, which are imaginary. So I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. So that's going to give me 8x is greater than or equal to negative 3. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 8. So this is going to give me x is greater than or equal to negative 3 eighths. If I were to graph this on a number line, negative 3 eighths would get a closed circle because it has this line under it, and the arrow points to the right. So the interval notation for this would be bracket, because that's a closed circle, negative 3 eighths, comma, infinity parentheses, because it goes to the right forever. Now up here on this graph, this vertex or endpoint would be negative 3 eighths. That would be the x value. The y value would be 0. So that coordinate there is negative 3 eighths, 0. The range is going to be from this y value up. So the range is going to be bracket, 0, comma, positive infinity. Because even though it goes to the right forever, it also goes up forever. Yes, the square root is a function. I'm going to take the guts. 2x plus 1, and make it greater than or equal to 0. Subtract 1, subtract 1. That's going to give us 2x is greater than or equal to negative 1. Divide by 2, divide by 2. So x is greater than or equal to negative 1 half. Now, I'm going to graph it instead of on the number line. I'm going to graph it on the x, y axis. So my vertex is going to be at negative 1 half, comma, 0. And then the graph is going to go up and to the right, a speed-out path for football players. So the domain, the furthest left x value, is negative one-half. The furthest right value is obviously positive infinity. The range, the lowest y value, is that zero. Bracket zero because it's a closed circle. Comet infinity. I know it doesn't go up as quick as it goes right, but it does go up forever. So we're asked if this is a function. Um, when something's not a function, that would usually be when y is squared. Um, if it's just y equals, it can be x squared, x cubed. But if it were y squared, it would not be a function. This one is a function, so yes, the relation is a function. <clears throat> and now it wants to know what the domain is. Basically, to find the restrictions on the domain, you set the bottom equal to zero. Because the bottom is not allowed to equal zero. Then once you solve this, this would give you x equals 8. But technically, it's supposed to be x cannot equal 8. So your domain is going to be everything but 8. And this is what everything but 8 looks like in interval notation. So it would be open parentheses from negative infinity to 8. Parentheses, because it's not allowed to equal 8. It's not allowed to equal 8. Union parentheses, 8, comma, infinity, close parentheses. On a number line, <clears throat> x cannot equal 8 looks like this. So at 8, I would have an open circle, and it would be everything to the left and everything to the right on the number line. So there would just be one space there where x is not allowed to equal 8. And when you graph it on the number line, you put little parentheses on the open circle. It goes to negative infinity all the way to the left. It goes to positive infinity all the way to the right. And since you can never touch infinity, you put parentheses on infinity always. Now it wants to know what the range is. To find the range, you have to deal with the, the horizontal asymptotes. So when you're doing a problem that's a, a fraction, it's called a rational expression. If the degree at the top, this is technically 9x to the 0 over x to the first minus 8. When the degree at the top is less than the degree at the bottom, your horizontal asymptote is going to be y equals 0. So a graph of this entire thing, this entire graph, would look like this. I'll have a vertical asymptote at x equals 8. So you go over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and there would be a vertical asymptote over there. There would be a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. So a vertical asymptote at x equals 8, vux, 
horizontal asymptote, hoi, at y equals zero. And so this actual curve, if you were to throw a number in, let's say you threw in <clears throat> a 10, 10 minus 8 is 2, 9 over 2, that would be 4.5. So at 10, it would be up here. And the graph would look like this. It would look like a, a hyperbola on its side. So the range is going to be everything but zero. This is what everything but zero looks like. Parentheses, negative infinity, zero parentheses, union, zero, comma, infinity. So the domain is everything on the x-axis. The range is everything on the y-axis. I like to use this memory mnemonic. X comes before Y in the alphabet. So the domain comes before the range. The X values are the domain. The Y values are the range. Yes, it's a function. There's no Y squared. The actual graph of this is going to have a vertical asymptote at 8. A horizontal asymptote because the degree of the top is smaller than the degree of the bottom at y equals zero. So some people put dashes like this. You throw a random number in like one. One minus eight is negative seven. So at one, it's going to be negative one. And the graph is going to look like this. So it's not asking me to graph it. I'm just doing that so you can see that the domain is restricted at x cannot equal eight. And here's what x cannot equal eight. Everything but eight looks like. Negative infinity, comma, 8, parentheses, union, parentheses, 8, comma, positive infinity. Everything but 0, y cannot equal 0, or y equals 0 is my horizontal asymptote. Everything but 0 looks like this. <clears throat> I'm asked to rewrite this. Um, the... 3x squared is on the left side, so I want to just solve it for y and then put it in f of x notation. What I also like to do is put it in descending exponential order. So I'm going to put negative 3x squared. Notice I have to subtract that 3x squared over from both sides. And then I want to move the negative 3x in front of that, plus 3. That would be in standard descending exponential form. Now I'm asked to evaluate this at 3. So I'm basically just going to plug in a 3. So negative 3 times 3 squared minus 3 times 3 plus 3. I get that 3 from this 3 over here. So I'm going to put that 3 inside those parentheses. I'd like to use the text so I don't make a mistake on my arithmetic. So I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to make sure I'm in mode 1. And then I'm going to hit the negative button, negative 3. Whoops. Yep, negative 3, parentheses, 3, close parentheses, x squared, minus 3, parentheses, 3, plus 3. And it'll generate the numeric answer pretty rapidly, negative 33. <clears throat> I'm asked to rewrite this equation <clears throat> and put it in f of x form instead of y, so I'm just going to subtract 2x squared from both sides. Once I do that, I'll put it in descending exponential order, negative 2x squared minus 3x plus 3. I'm asked to plug in a 3, so it would be negative 2 times 3 squared minus 3 times 3 plus 3. I'm going to put a 3 into those spots. I put this 3, this 3 inside of here. Again, I'm going to use the technology. I'm going to clear out my calculator and then type this in. Negative 2. Parentheses 3, close parentheses squared, minus 3, parentheses 3, close parentheses, plus 3. And that gives us a negative 24. Increasing, decreasing problems. <clears throat> All math arrows point right on graphs. All math arrows point right on graphs. So when I put an arrow here and it points to the right, notice it also points up a little. So because there's an arrow stating that this goes in, the, in that direction forever, it's actually coming from that direction from forever, negative forever. And then it starts to increase over here again. So the function is increasing on what interval? It's going to be increasing 
on the interval from negative infinity to this x value. Negative infinity to negative 5. Now, this is what uh, bothers me. It says use interval notation. But then, instead of using a union, they want me to put a comma here. And then it starts to increase again at x value 5 to infinity. I'm asked to see where it's decreasing. So it's going to be decreasing from negative 5 to just 5. That's this downhill swath where you're going downhill on a roller coaster. So it's decreasing on this interval, negative 5 to 5. The function is never constant. The function is never constant. A constant function would be if it came up like this and then went straight across. The constant function has a slope of 0. A constant function is a horizontal line. This function is not constant. More increasing, decreasing. So again, all math arrows point to the right. This one is going to be increasing up till negative 6. Starts to increase again at 6. They don't want me to use appropriate interval notation from negative infinity to negative 6. Don't put a union because it tells me to use a comma. And then it starts again at x value 6 to infinity. It's decreasing again on this little, little area going downhill. So that's going to be from 6 to 6. Negative 6 to 6. And no, it's never constant. The function is constant on no interval, so that would be B, never, not constant, or never constant. It never goes straight across. <clears throat> What's the domain and range of a parabola? Well, the domain of a parabola is negative infinity to infinity. It goes to the left forever. It goes to the right forever. The range, notice, I see the arrows pointing down. I see the arrows pointing down, but it's actually coming up from way below. And the y value, the lowest y value, would be negative infinity. Now, the highest y value is going to be this implied closed circle up here at 4. So the highest y value is 4, so we put a bracket on it. Now, this is a square root function. Function. This one, its domain starts at negative 5, and you can see it has a closed circle on it. So it starts at negative 5, and it goes to the right forever. It goes to the right forever. So it's going to end at infinity and never put a bracket on infinity. Only put a parenthesis. So bracket, negative 5, it starts at negative 5. It goes to the right forever, infinity. The range. The range is the y value. That's not negative 5 y value. That's 0. So the range is going to start at 0 and go up forever. I know it's going right, but it's also going upward as it goes to the right. Find the slope. So the slope formula is y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. I like to set up a little template. <clears throat> Notice I have my division bar and I have my two minus signs. And y's is going to be 8 minus 2. X's is going to be 2 minus 5. If you're a little nervous with your arithmetic, you can always enter it into the calculator. Hit the fraction button. 8 minus 2 on top, down arrow, 2 minus 5 on the bottom. It will leave it in fraction form or simplify it for you. So negative 2 is my slope. <clears throat> negative 2. Find the slope again. So I'm going to set up my template. My y value, 1 minus 5, 6 minus 8. So 1 minus 5 over 6 minus 8. 1 minus 5, down arrow, 6 minus 8. And that turns out to be just plain old 2. Find the slope of the line. The slope of this line is going to be opposite A. Slope, when it's in standard form, it has to be in standard form to use this, is opposite of A over B. Now, in this instance... A is 3, so that's going to be negative 3 over B is negative 3. Negative 3, and that'll simplify to positive 1. So the slope is just 1. <clears throat> now I'm asked to graph this thing. I'm going to use the intercepts to graph it. So I call it yin-yang because it looks a little bit like the yin-yang symbol. So I put a 0 here and a 0 here. 
I'm going to go in. This is the y-intercept. So to find the y-intercept, I hide the x. And I solve this little tiny equation, 18 divided by negative 3. Well, 18 divided by negative 3 is going to give me negative 6. Um, I'm going to hide the b value. To find the x y value, you have to hide the y. To find the x value, you have to hide the y. So I'm going to hide the y value, and that gives me 18 divided by 3. 18 divided by 3, when I hide that y value. 18 divided by 3 is 6. So now I'm going to graph this. I'm going to go to 0, negative 6, and 6, 0. So 0, negative 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And 6, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And notice that when I connect these dots, I get a nice straight line. With a slope of 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. The slope is negative a over b, so it would be negative 5 over negative 3. That's going to simplify to just 5 thirds. Now I'm going to use the yin-yang to find out what the x-intercept and y-intercept are. So my y-intercept is going to have a 0 in the x value. My x-intercept is going to have a 0 in the y spot. So to find the y, I hide the x. 15 divided by negative 3 is negative 5. To find the x, I hide the y. 15 divided by 5 is 3. So I have to plot these points. 0, negative 5, and 3, 0. 0, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 3, 0, 1, 2, 3. That slope is going to go up 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, over 1, 2, 3, up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, over 1, 2, 3. Up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, over 1, 2, 3. And that's going to give me the graph of my line. <clears throat> I'm asked to find the average rate of change uh, from this graph. Notice it has a crosshair here. Some people like to look at this. I don't. I like to go where it, it, it's on another lattice point, it's called, on the gra graph paper. So these are lattice points where the crosses meet. So this goes from 24 to 18, so it goes down 6 over 1, 2. So it looks like it's going to be negative 3, but we get this wrong. We have to read. It's actually negative 3,000. It's actually negative $3,000. So the average rate of change is negative $3,000. See how they had the nice little negative out there for us? The value of the machine is decreasing, decreasing $3,000 each year. Now I'm asked to write an equation of the line that passes through 8, 9. <clears throat> that has a horizontal line. Horizontal line. We're going to use Vox Hoy for this. So Vox Hoy. It's a little memory mnemonic. So find the equation for the horizontal line passing through 8, 9. So if they asked for a vertical line, it would be x equals 8. But because they asked for a horizontal line, that's what the hoy stands for. It's just going to be y equals the y value. y equals 9. Find the equation of the horizontal line that passes through 8, 5. Again, that's going to be vux, hoy. Uh, keyword is horizontal, y value is 5, so y equals 5 is my equation for the horizontal line. If I wanted the vertical line through 8, 5, it would be x equals 8. But it asks for the horizontal line, the equation of the horizontal line. <clears throat> so I'm asked to write an equation that passes through 1, 7. It passes through the coordinate 1, 7. And its slope is perpendicular to the slope of this line. Well, the slope of this line, all I look at is 2x plus 7y. The slope of that line is negative a over b. The slope of the perpendicular line, the perpendicular slope, is just going to be b over a. So once I find out that the slope is the negative reciprocal when it's perpendicular, I just look at the b, which is 7, over the a, which is 2. So the slope required for this problem that they want me to do is going to be 7 halves. Now I use this little trick. I go right to standard form. I don't do um, slope-intercept form first. I do standard form first. 
And standard form is when it's in the form of AX plus BY equals C. Um, I recognize that this slope is positive. When the slope is positive here, I put a negative underneath the comma. And that 7 turns into 7X. And that 2 turns into 2Y. And that's going to equal some value over here. We don't know what it is yet. To find out what that value is, I use this 7, this 2, and these two coordinates. Notice the X coordinate is 1. So that would be 7 times 1 minus the Y coordinate is 7. So I'm going to put this 1 in for X. I'm going to put this 7 in for Y. And that, when I evaluate that, will give me my value over there. So 7 times 1 minus 2 times 7. So 7 times 1 minus 2 times 7. So my slope, I'm sorry, my C is negative 7. So this is going to equal negative 7. So that's standard form. That's the answer to part B. That's the answer to part B. So I'm going to come down here in standard form. I'm going to write 7x minus 2y equals negative 7. Now they want it in slope-intercept form. Slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. So I have my slope. My slope is 7 halves. So I'm going to start off. I'm going to put y equals 7 halves x. Now all I need to do is figure out what the b is. I can figure out what the b is by looking at the standard form. I can do yin-yang. So the y-intercept is my b value. So when I hide this x value, I get negative 7 over negative 2. Notice I get negative 7 divided by negative 2, which would be a positive 7 halves. So plus 7 halves over here. Slope-intercept form, standard form. <clears throat> goes through 1, 7. Goes through 1, 7 and is perpendicular to 3x plus 5y. Goes through the coordinate 1, 7. And the slope would be negative 3 over 5, but the perpendicular slope is going to be b over a, 5 over 3. So I put that slope over here, 5 over 3. And because that's a positive slope, I'm going to put a minus sign. The opposite of this, a minus sign there. And then it's going to go pretty quickly. 5x plus 3y, 5x plus 3y is going to equal something. To find out what this equals, I have to plug in this 1 to this equation. I have to plug in this 7 to this equation. So 5 minus 21. Gives me negative 16. So my standard form, the answer to part B is going to be 5x minus 3y equals negative, seven, negative 16. So 5x minus 3y equals negative 16. So the equation in slope-intercept form is going to be y equals mx plus b. So y equals, I have my slope of 5 thirds, x. Now I need to find out what the, the b term is from slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. We've already discovered what our slope is. So to find out what b is, I come down here, I'm going to do yin-yang. And my y-intercept is when I hide the x value. So it's going to be negative 16 divided by negative 3. So plus 16 thirds. Standard form, slope-intercept form. 37, now I'm given two points and asked to give the answer in standard form. So it doesn't want it in y equals mx plus 3 form. It wants it in standard form. It gives me two coordinates, negative 1, 3, 2, 4. First thing I have to do is find the slope. So I'm going to set up my slope template. I'm going to put in the 4 and the 3 on top. And then on the bottom, I'm going to put the 2 and the negative 1. Hit the fraction bar. 4 minus 3, down arrow. 2 minus negative 1, so my slope is 1 third. Now the date this Friday night, I have to choose which one I'm going out with, negative 1, 3 or 2, 4. I'm going to go out with this 2, 4 here. She doesn't, she's not negative, so I'm going to go out with 2, 4. Now I have to write the equation in standard form because this slope is positive. I put a negative underneath the comma, and then it's going to go pretty rapidly. It's going to be 1x 
minus 3y equals something. So I'm going to type in my calculator 1 times 2 minus 3 times 4. Notice that 2 goes in for the x. That 4 goes in to the y, so it's going to be 1 times 2 minus 3 times 4. So 2 minus 12, I'm going to do the whole thing. 1 times 2 minus 3 times 4 should be negative 10. So my equation in standard form is going to be 1x minus 3y is equal to negative 10. So I have two coordinates, negative 2, 4, 6, 5. I'm going to set up my slope template. I'm going to put in the values 5. 4, 6, negative 2. Fraction bar, 5 minus 4 over 6 minus negative 2. Gives me a slope of 1 fifth. So I have a slope of 1 fifth. And I have to choose one of these coordinates. I'm going to choose 6, 5. I notice that this is a positive slope, so I put a minus sign underneath the comma. And then I'm going to write down 1x and 5y. 1x and 5y. And that's going to equal something. So I do 1 times that 6 minus 5 times that 5, that y. 1 times 6 minus 5 times 5 gives me negative 19. So my equation is going to be x minus 5y equals negative 19.